I made two of these teas several months ago out of a really buttery, soft, white jersey, perfectly tailored to fit yours truly. But sometimes I feel like wearing a black tee and all I've got is this Gildan shirt that has ill-fitting shoulders, coarse jersey fabric, sleeves that are basically wings. On the right side, my skinny arm, I could fit at least another three or four of these little noodles in here. You know? You see where I'm going with this, yes? Now making these black teas was meant to be a project for me to do just one evening, but I find myself not having the time to sew unless I'm doing one of these videos. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, ugh, boring, just making a t-shirt. This is gonna be a lame video. And I also see you cynics, yeah, you, leaning back in your chair, you got that real smug look on your face, just thinking to yourself, I bet he's making these t-shirts because he's got a short week, because he's off to Montreal for the weekend to see a good friend, works extra busy, but he still wants to keep his weekly schedule of making one video. And so he's phoning it in, making a couple of t-shirts. What an accusation. Ay, Dios mio. And let me guess, you probably also think the only reason I'm using one red thread is because I was in such a rush when I was out and about getting this fabric that I forgot to buy a new one to replace this other one. And you'd be wrong. That's definitely not it at all. Matter of fact, it's meant to be an eccentric little detail just for me that I know about when I'm wearing the shirt. I can't believe you don't have more faith in me. Perhaps uh, I'm projecting a little bit there. But you know what, I don't like to focus on the problem. I like solutions, and so I've come up with what I think is an interesting idea of how I can provide some entertainment value on what could otherwise be a rather boring video. Let's head into the woods, metaphorically speaking, go and find ourselves a little bit of firewood a little bit of kindling. <laughs> Who am I kidding? These palms, much too soft to be chopping wood. Plus, it's going to be all green and wet and it won't burn very well. Alright, you know what? Scrap that. Yeah, I think instead we head to the department store, we buy a bundle of fr super dry, perfectly chopped firewood, get a package of kindling that goes up in flames. You know the type I'm talking about. Let's also get a pot of coffee going in this scenario. I like the sound of that. I'm talking like a real proper coffee, no instant mix. We're, we're grinding beans, we're gonna boil the water, you know, in a, in a mocha pot. And since we're having coffee in this situation, why don't we also have some Kit Kat bars? I think they go well together, right? Kit Kat bars, yeah? Yeah, I like the sound of that. Also, note to self, go out and buy some Kit Kat bars so that the scenario will make sense at the end. Mm. 
And some of that lo-fi jazz, hip-hop, instrumental type music. You know the type I'm talking about, the kind of coffee shoppy, I'm hip, Starbucks type vibe. Hold on, I think I hear the cynics groaning again. I am dragging out my description so I can make it to the end of the shirt, huh? In fact, what I am doing is I'm setting the scene for a how I make this, what is otherwise just a boring sewing a black t-shirt video, more interesting. All right. Oh wait. Look at me. There I go again, projecting. Now I realize by the scene that I've been setting here, it sounds like I'm suggesting we make some sweet, sweet amor. Eh, you know, it'd be nice, but no, I think to make this video entertaining, what I'm gonna do is in between different sewing scenes, I'm gonna splice in little edits of me roasting some literature. The shirt's done. Well, how about that? No need to cut any of this roasting in between. We can just make it an outro. <laughs> Oh, aren't I just a genius and isn't this all so impromptu? Ah, come on, look, I'm just trying to be creative here. It's a t-shirt, I gotta make this exciting somehow, all right? And when I say you, I'm talking to me, I'm trying to make it interesting for me here. Look at that, they're not wings anymore. I'm happy with that. And I have a second one that I made at the same time. So I'm good to go when it comes to black t-shirts, but I'm distracting from what we're here for now. I'm going to need you to take a little leap of faith with me here when I, while I get this Fire started. Editing Cornelius. Cue the music. Fade it in real nice and gentle for us. Thank you. All right. Little less wafery and a bit more waffly. Leaves something to be desired, but. But for the roast, I thought we would turn to the gentleman's quarterly. Looks like he's having lactation problems. You know how it gets. Baby's on there all day, start cracking. The baby just wants more. Look at his eye. Uh, no. Amen, brother. I get it. I'm not having any more babies either. Mom. I don't want to go to this dinner party. Draw your hair, boy. Look presentable. I'm putting on your tie. Oh, here we go. She's just not that into you. In the game of hooking up, how do you know if you have a shot or if you're just deluding yourself? David Wayne offers a cautionary tale. December 3rd, 11.45 a.m. In my apartment, on my couch. I take a deep breath, dial Deborah's number, and press send. Ring, ring. Hey, 
It's David Wayne. I met you the other night at the party. He's sweating buckets. Uh, huh? You gave me your number. We talked about hanging out this week. Okay. Remember, I sat on the plate of cupcakes and had to take off my jeans and we laughed and then we made out. Uh, uh. Oh, yes, cupcake guy, how are you? Good, good, uh, jeans are washed now, so that's over. I'm such a bumbling idiot, oh, I'm clumsy. No, you're cute, it's adorable. What kind of dweeb doesn't see a plate of cupcakes? Also, what's a plate of cupcakes doing on the floor? On the chair, I mean, Jesus. I started flipping through channels on my TV while talking, talking, hoping it will make my voice sound casual. Like, I don't care too much. Me continued. So, do you want to grab a drink sometime? Deborah. Sure, that'd be fun. How about tonight? Perfect, let me know. You're on the phone right now. Just pick a time. This is also one thing I hate about online dating and texting. Actually, I don't hate it, but I've noticed is the casualness of it. Look, I'll tell you, I'm available this time and this time and this time. Pick one that works. Let's make it happen. Trust me, there's another 10 of you who I can go on a date with. Let's get to it. The amount of times I've had them, I've had someone ask like, all right, well, we'll plan for this day and then we'll confirm. No, either we do this or we don't. Trust me, I'm moving on to the next. I live in Toronto. There's another 2.9 million of you. Actually, divide in half for women. 1.5, basically. Take out some of the married ones. Let's divide that in half too. Let's say 750,000 of you. Please, trust me, I'm not gonna, especially because we have never even met in person. Oh, <laughs> look at that, projecting again. I'm letting you know now. Let's go to the bar. Let's go to bar six tonight for a drink. Say at eight. There we go. A man after my own heart. Ripping him first. Kind of like him now. Deborah. Cool. Leave me a message and we can figure out. No need. Just meet me there at eight. All right. Cautionary tale here, my friend. Bail. You gave her time. She said again. Let's confirm. And then you had to say it again. Trust me, man. This ain't going anywhere good. I hang up, slightly confused, but psyched. No, not confused. You're deluding yourself, my friend. Walk away. Walk away. December 5th, 2, 11 p.m. Walking down the street, casual gate, dialing phone. Deborah. Hello? Me. Hey, it's David Wayne. Hey you, I thought we were gonna have a drink the other night. Yeah, you never showed up. I never heard from you, so I figured it wasn't happening. Why the hell did you call her back? You're a dweeb, man. All right, I'm hating you again now. I do the old hold the phone in front of my face and squint at it, bit. Well, hey. Tonight I have a reservation at Joe's Pub for this great jazz show, and we can have dinner there too. Wow, that sounds really great. I'll get dressed up. But they'll give up our seats if we're not there on time, so meet me out front no later than 7.45, okay? I really look forward to this, David. See you at Joe's Pub at 7.45. December 5th, 7.50 p.m. Outside Joe's Pub, freezing me. Hi Deborah, it's David. It's 10 to 8 and I'm outside Joe's pub and you're not here. I'll try you at home, but I hope you're on your way. Desperation is a smelly cologne, my friend. This isn't a cautionary tale. This should be a cautionary tale against yourself. About not trying to convince yourself that somehow this is gonna, this is a borderline insanity, my friend. Borderline insanity. December 5th, 7.52 p.m. Me. Hey, David Wayne, I left a message on your cell. Thought I'd try you at home. Just in case, call me. I'm at Joe's Pub. 
Astor Place and 4th Avenue. Call me. December 5th, 8.06 p.m. Me, hey. So I'm going in. Tell the person at the door that you're with me and hopefully they'll let you in. If you're not coming, just let me know. <sighs> Have some dignity, David Wayne. Have some dignity. Trust me, she's not the issue. She's shown you from the beginning who she is. You should have walked away. Walk away. Honestly, I can't even bother to finish this. This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. All right, well. Not so much of a roast, but um, a little worked up there. Got a little personal again. Might have been that guy at one point in my life. 